Happy Friday, everybody. How's it going? Let me move this around. You know, um, I'm gonna say over. I'm gonna say hi over here with my hand to Instagram. So I'm trying something today. I know there's there's those of you that follow us on Instagram. So I've got another camera that I'm doing Instagram. So I'm saying hey to Instagram, and um, then we're over here on Facebook. So I'm gonna give it just a minute for it to kind of populate and let everybody hop on here. Um, if you've not tuned in before, my name is Amy Howard, and I am Deb the Mother Maker here um, at a Maker Studio and Amy Howard at Home. And part of my reasoning in doing these Finish Fridays is not about doing projects that are furniture. First of all, I probably need to ask, can you hear me? Let me know. Can you? Instagram, hey. And Facebook, can you hear me? Just somebody say, yes, Amy, we can hear you. Hey, Gretchen. Hey, Julie. Hey, Kay. So, um, Michelle, hey, how's it going? Yes, you can hear me, Donna. Thank you so much. So, as you pop on here, say hey. Tell me where you're tuning in from. But I want to be able to, one, I know your time is valuable. I know that many of you are on your lunch hours um, or maybe your lunch breaks. And the whole reasoning for me doing Finish Fridays is, one, I want to, one, I want to raise your level of connoisseurship. Um, I also want you, I know when you're looking at something or if you see, um, if you see a bag, if you see a bag of milk paint and you're like going, I have no idea what that does. I have no idea how to use this. I have no idea to how to create something. And so what, what ensues is this frustration is that you start, you, you start looking, you're looking on YouTube, you're looking on different places and you're, you just get more and more frustrated. And I think it's important that I give you um, kind of a method to the madness, that I take you through the steps. Now, I will tell you, I didn't bring a notebook up here, but one thing I tell my students in my inner circle is to take notes. So if you can grab a piece of paper, if you can grab a notebook, or even get your phone and be able to take notes what I'm doing today. I will tell you what I plan on doing is we're going to put this into a blog. So it will be in step outs because I want you to have something that you really feel that we're educating you when I do this, but that you're empowered. So one of the things I want to show you today, I'm going to walk you through some of the differences in milk paint. But the other thing is I want to be able to show you how to create a two-dimensional a two-dimensional finish like this. Look at this. So it's fun. We came in here. T looked at my sample and she's like, wait a minute. How did you get the shadows in this? How did you do that? It's easy. And the other thing I like to do when I do these Finish Fridays, hang with me. Oh, let me show you this. So when I do these Finish Fridays, I want you to not only learn the product, what sets it apart, but also learning something that you can set into place. So here's what we've done. Just on the Finish Fridays, we're going to have it to where we have a code, and it's only available on the products that I am teaching you. And so um, you can go to Amy Howard at Home. If you buy the products, you just type in, are you ready? Finish Friday 119. Part of the reason for that is because today's January 19th. So Finish Friday 119 is the code. It's not put anywhere else because I only want it for the people that are listening and that want to learn and want to be able to execute this. So a lot of you may say, why, are, why do you do these on samples? Why aren't you doing them on a piece of furniture? Here's the deal. If you're going to be creating a portfolio, if you're going to be working with designers and architects, or if this is something that you want to be able to have and really build a business out of it or even for yourself, you start with a sample first. That's what happens. I would never go and start working on a piece of furniture before I've done my homework and I've done my sample. So that's why I'm teaching you on these wood sample pieces. All right, so I'm not going to talk anymore, but I wanted to explain that's the difference. And let's go through very clearly the steps in order to be able to create the finish. I two different finishes that I'm going to show you today. Are you ready? All right. So I'm going to turn this around. Bear with me. I am my own um, Instagram over here. I'm getting ready to work. So that way you are good. So let's go on. I'm going to turn this around like this and get you situated. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So let's move this over. Bear with me. All right. So now what we're doing, there we go. So I wanted you to see two different examples. 
This one is, of course, it's got a darker background. This is lighter, and it's kind of done in reverse. So in order for you to really fully understand it, I thought, you know what? I need to kind of walk them through this process so that way they understand. So let's break down this finish right now, and let's go on. So I'm going to set this one aside, and I want to walk you through how to do this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to mix our milk paint, and I'm going to introduce working with the binder. Part of the reason why milk paint allows you so much versatility, it allows you to be able to create so many great looking finishes, is because it's that it's milk. It's casein. C-A-S-E-I-N. Casein. If you look on the back of your yogurt that you ate this morning, if you eat yogurt, it has casein in it. So part of the beauty and the reason why I do the milk paint is because it allows you to be able to distress it and lift the finish. But... When we add binder, um, and those of you, as you pop on here, please say hello. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Don't forget the, the code, if you want to be able to order the supplies that only I'm working with today, only what I'm showing you today, you can use the discount code of Finish Friday 119. So, um, but I want you to be able to understand the whole reasoning behind things. So I'm going to take this, and we're going to mix this up. We're going to mix a little bit of the milk paint. And, but as you pop on here, I may not be able to answer it um, exactly when I'm doing it, but if you will ask me your question, I will go back and I will answer this. En route to Carmel, Indiana. Please be careful on these streets. Guys, is this not the most crazy weather you've ever seen? All right, so I'm going to go on. I'm working with, back. let me back that up. I'm going to be working with Southern Gentleman. So Southern Gentleman is the color. It is a darker kind of blue-green. Now, when you open up the milk paint, it's always going to be in a powder form. If you're watching for the first time, please say, hey, tell me, like, this is the first time I've seen this, um, is let me know because I'm curious if you're new to this and if, you, if you've got any experience. I know there are some of my students on here. I recognize your names. So I love being able to see you guys. But the reason, milk, the reason the milk paint stays in this powder form is because once it's mixed into a milk or once you open that can, guess what? It, it's going to age. It's going to go bad just like milk will. So we leave it in its powder form. Our pigments are natural pigments that come from Provence. They come from natural quarries, which gives you the richness of the color. But I'm going to do something today in mixing this paint, which is normally one part water, to one part paint. It's just one to one. Here, please don't do this. Please share this with your person. Share, oh, and here's the other thing I forgot. Share this video. Tag your friends that are crafty, that love making things, that love to create beautiful interiors um, by doing beautiful finishes like this. And your name will go in for a drawing. And Monday, we're going to be announcing the winner. And I'm going to put together a collection of the milk paint and the stencil and the wax for you to be able to do some projects with. So all you have to do is share the video, tag some friends, and your name will go in for the drawing. So, all right, so now I'm going to add some water. Guess what? This is not cold water. This is room temperature water. You can use tap water. I do this because it's basically um, up here at my desk, and it makes it easy to be able to pour. So I will normally not mix all of the... Um, all of the water in at the time. What I want you to do is I want you to kind of make a paste first when you're working with the milk paint. Make a paste so it's going to be a little bit thicker, and then that way you can go back and you can add more of your, um, you can add more of the water to it. So the other thing you're going to notice, it's a little granular. So sometimes I will take, I'm going to bring my spoon over here. I will take an artist brush, and I'll kind of go down in here, and I will get those granules out. Now, look. Look how I'm literally pressing my brush down to the bottom of this bowl, so that way I am getting this all mixed up, so I don't want to hear those little granules anymore. So now, what am I going to do? I'm going to add, I'm going to add binder. Why, you're like, I need, why do I need binder? The Toscana Milk Paint Binder basically allows the milk paint to now be solid to where it will adhere to almost any surface. So it almost makes it like the one step. So if I didn't put the binder in the milk paint, what's going to happen? Do y'all know? Or in any of my students watching, tell me. If I don't put the milk paint binder into the milk paint, what's going to happen? I'm going to wait just a second. I want to see what somebody says. 
Hey, Anna from Texas. I've heard it's even cold in Texas. Instagram over here. Does anybody know why we have, why we put the binder in here? All right, I'm gonna go on and answer it because I don't want y'all to have to wait, but I do wanna see, it won't stick, that's right. So the binder allows it to where I'm not gonna be able to antique it because I'm gonna be putting a stencil on top of this to be able to get a design. So I'm gonna just add about that much binder. Now, here's the other thing that you need to know. The binder is going to change the color of the milk paint. That's part of the other reason why you need to be able to test it. And I'm going to mix this up. All right, so now let's go on and paint our board. Don't worry, I've got one already done. Um, so that way, could you grab me a board real quick? Just a blank one. I just want to... I want to paint this on there. I've got one already done, but I want you to be able to see it. So let's go through the process. So here's the finish that I'm wanting to show you how to do. See our color down here? This is what we're working with. This is our Southern Gentleman. So we're just going to paint it on our board. I'm going to grab my artist brush again. Mix this up. Here's the other thing that you need to be sure and do. As you are working with the milk paint, it's part of a um, agitating, agitated a little bit along the way. You don't want this to sit here because with milk paint, it doesn't have the additives and things in it that you would have with normal paint. And the yummy stuff, the pigment, are going to settle to the bottom. So let's make sure that every time we brush it, we just agitate it a little bit. And believe it or not, you get used to it after a while and it comes very natural. The other thing that you'll notice with the milk paint, as you... Add, as we added the binder and we added the water, um, it went a lot darker, didn't it? So as it dries, it's going to go back and dry down to the original color that you saw in the package. That's part of the beauty of it. All right, so you see as far as the coverage is really fantastic. I'm making sure that I don't have any holidays. I'm just kind of going back over this again and I'm happy with the coverage. I'm gonna set that apart. This will air dry within 10 minutes, easy. If you want, you can sit it with, you can hit it with a hair dryer. So now, because I came in here and I prepared, this is, this is the Southern Gentleman that we just mixed with the binder and the water, it's dry. Now, you'll notice, see how close, but it's just a little bit darker than when it was in the package, and that's a good thing. So. Now, I am, um, I will tell you, as a rule, I, part of the reason why I love this is because it's got a little bit of variation to it. I love the color. I love the way it looks really natural. It looks old. And so I, I'm not going to do anything else to it. It's got the binder in it, so I'm good to go. So the next step, so number one, let's just, let's go back. Number one step, we take the choice of our milk paint, we mix it with the binder and the water, we brush it on, one coat is plenty, and then let it dry. So then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and we're gonna add our stencil. Now the stencil that I am working with today is, it's called Vintage Damask. It's a 12 by 12 stencil. And the great thing about it is if you're not artistic, now, I think we're all artistic, but some of us have drawing skills more than others. And so if you're like, I'm not, I'm not artsy, Amy, I can't draw, but you would be able to use a stencil and be very successful and people are gonna be amazed. So the good thing about it is all of our patterns like this have it to where they can be lined up. So if you get a couple of different stencils and the good thing is um, because you're watching and we have a code today if you um, listen to the live, which you are, and it's Finish Friday 119, January 19th. So Finish Friday 119 is going to give you 20% off on the stencils, on the waxes, on the milk paint, everything that I am using today. All right, so now this is um, an adhesive. So where you see this and you see through it, that's where my ink is going to go. So I'm going to... I'm going to go on and remove the back of that paper. I've already kind of cut this up. And I'm going to lay this to where my damask is in the center of my sample. The good thing about it is these adhesive stencils are washable. You can wash them and use them over and over and over again. You can even spray um, a 3M adhesive on the back of these. And it will have it to where it will stick again. 
So I'm going to come back now. I'm going to be working with my um, black, which is called Can't Never Could, and my metallic gold ink. Now, let me show you. Let's go back. I want to show you what, what's the goal. What's the end goal? See how the black shadow is here? That's what's making it look almost three-dimensional. Like, there's a shadow behind it. That was what T said when she walked in. It was like, how did you do that? Well, I'm going to show you. So when you're looking at this and it's the smallest area, that's what you're going to apply first. So maybe this is a red background. Well, you know red is going to be what you're going to apply first. Or maybe with the other sample that I'm going to show you, this is a totally different color. But look, we use different color inks. So we did a little bit darker gray in the background, and then we did white on top of it. Are you, are you with me? All right, so we're going to put the black on first, and basically it's called an off-register application. So it's what's going to allow us to be able to get that shadow. So I'm going to take my spreader, and I'm going to take the Can't Never Could, which is the black, and I'm going to apply this. I'm going to squeeze this out on this spreader. Now, I will tell you, this is a great finish if you have a chest of drawers, if you have a mirror, if you have um, a frame, if you want to do um, a border, like on your, I am taking out, um, oh, uh, my, my mat in my frames that I do processes like this on. You can definitely paint mats with milk paint. Um, it's beautiful for that. So I've loaded it up with my black, and I'm just going to, Come, I'm going to hold it with my left hand here, and I'm going to hold this at a 45-degree angle and pull it down. Now, you'll notice, see how I've pulled up onto a 45-degree angle to where it is pressing it through here. Now, I'm going to go on, hold that here, and then I'm going to pull it up. Look at that. Crazy, huh? crazy. This is, the, this is the most fun part. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave my stencil like this. I'm not going to clean it out, but I am going to hit this with a hairdryer. Bear with me. We're going to do this pretty quick. I have no on Instagram. Same thing goes with Instagram. If you share this video, your name will go on for a drawing, and we're going to be giving away so many of these goodies for you to be able to do a project. So I just want to set this. I want that to dry because now I'm ready to come back and do the next application. So now I'm going to take my gold metallic. It's crazy um, how this gold metallic can look. Um, truly, it's almost like we've gilded. It's, it's one of the, um, the ways of cheating, I guess. So now I'm going to lay this back down. Now, I'm not concerned about it being perfect. I actually like doing it a little off register. And when I say that, you can kind of move it to where that way you're going to see the shadow underneath. So I'm just looking through here. I'm lining this up. All right, so now I'm gonna take a clean spreader and I'm gonna spread out my gold metallic ink, holding this at the top and I'm gonna, it's kind of a two part action. I spread it and then I'll scrape it. Now some of this is gonna be blending with the black because it's still wet, but that doesn't bother me. Look at that. Does that, like, isn't that cray, cray, is somebody, I can't remember if it was one of my kids that said cray cray, but look at that. Look. Now, see what we've done? We've got our color here. This was our um, Southern Gentleman. We did our black first. Why? The black, it's like, I love that. You're, you're like my sister from another mother, Helen. It's like magic. I feel the same way. So we've got the black that we really don't see anymore because we did the gold on top of it. Here you go, Instagram. Look at that. 
And that's what allows us to be able to now, look at the depth that it's got. It's crazy. The depth is amazing, but it's still a little raw. Are y'all with me? So this is where I'm wanting to raise your level of connoisseurship. I wanna make sure that it's not too raw. So what do we need to do? We're gonna go in and dry it just a little bit more. I wanna set this gold ink. Now, this is totally different. Remember the first one that we started with? We mixed the binder with this. Why? We wanted the binder to make sure that when we started doing this next step, that the paint didn't come off. So now we're gonna mix up a little bit of the Southern Gentleman. T's keeping me straight here. So we're gonna take a little bit of the Southern Gentleman milk paint. And I'm gonna make a glaze. Now, the, the ability for me now, I'm not gonna add the binder because I just wanna have a beautiful, thin glaze. And what's that glaze gonna do? Glazes do a lot of things. You've probably heard this on a lot of different, you know, whether it's YouTube or whatever, and you kinda of like, glazes can be varnishes that you mix with things, but also glazes can be ways to be able to blend finishes and set things back. The whole point of glazing this is to set it back. As it is right now, the gold looks a little garish to me. And my whole part of doing this is to really create authentic looking finishes that are totally different than what you see from anybody else. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the students that I get in my Old World Finishing course, which you can see that on the Amy Howard at Home page or in my inner circle, it's because they've chalk, they've chalk painted things, they've done things, but they really want to take their expertise to the next level. And that's why I'm doing these Finish Fridays. I want to teach you finishes that you can turn around and put on a piece of furniture. So now I'm mixing that really good. See how I transition to an artist brush when I'm trying to mix up my, my milk paint? And it's a little thinner. I've done about three parts water to one part paint. Are you with me? So I'm making a glaze. So now I'm just gonna mix that up real good. I wanna make sure this is, let me hit this one more time, just a little bit. thing is I am kind of doing some no-no things because speeding this whole process up when I'm trying to show you we're almost we're on the um, we're on the home stretch here so I'm gonna go on and put some uh, gloves on I get tired of walking into the nail place and the ladies look at me like oh no who's gonna do Miss Howard's hands because I have paint yeah does anybody go through the same thing I haven't had my nails done in so long because I've been painting so much. But I thought I'm gonna go get them cleaned up. All right, so so now I'm just gonna put on some gloves like this and that way we're gonna do a glaze. Now, the great thing about the milk paint is it has no VOCs. It's very easy to work with and you don't have to worry about the environment or anything. It's so it's food grade material. All right, so now I'm getting a, um, a lint-free rag ready because this is what's going to Oh, look, my rag has um, words on it. Well, that's funny. Okay, so I'm going to dip this in here. And now I'm going to come on top of this. And what's the point of the glaze again? It's to set it back. It's to make it to where it's a little bit more subtle. And it's setting it back. How's it going, Instagram? All right, so... I'm not real concerned. I just want to get it everywhere, but I'm I'm going to I'm going to come in and I'm going to take it right off. So I'm not concerned about it being perfect. So now with my lint-free rag, I'm going to come in and I'm patting it. This is a very important process. Pat it. The point of patting it is that it allows us to be able to set it back. If I start dragging it or if I'm using a brush, then I'm going to get more of a of a pattern from my glaze than I wanted. So I'm patting it to where 
It's taking it off, but look what happens. It set that gold back, and it's much more subtle. Are y'all with me? Do you agree? Now, here's what we've got to be careful with. We've got to dry this again because now what we need to do, we're on the home stretch, is it would be a great wall treatment, wouldn't it? You could totally do this on a wall if you wanted to. But now we're going to use a matte sealer. If you've never worked with my matte sealer, um, you can use the code today. You can use Finish Friday 119 and get 20% off on the matte sealer. The matte sealer goes completely matte. You don't even know you put sealer on here. But what it does, it protects it from each layer. So I've got to make sure that my milk paint is protected, that it doesn't come off when I actually wax it. So let's hit it again with a hairdryer. We're almost finished. Look how it's lightening up. Look how I can see my color again. Can you see? Can y'all see? Oh, love it. Oh my gosh, now that blue's coming out. I'm so happy. So yes, we are using wax, but here's the thing. We've got to come back in with the matte sealer because we can't really do a continual um, full coverage of the wax on top of the milk paint on a flat surface like this. Now, I can if I have like a carved surface, but I'm wanting to kind of get it everywhere. So I've got to, um, I've got to seal it. So your question, what products does the Finish Friday Code work for? Everything that I'm showing you today to do these finishes. All right, so... I'm gonna dip this sponge brush. Now look what I've transitioned over to. I'm using a sponge brush, why? Why do you think I'm using a sponge brush? Could I use a chip brush? Yes, but I think a lot of you, I'm wanting my students, I'm wanting who's listening to have success. And so if I can get you with a sponge brush, that way you're gonna be able to load it up here and go boom, and you don't have any brush strokes, and it's a thin application. And the beautiful thing is, you're not gonna see anything at all. You're, gonna, you're watching it, you're going, okay, I see I'm putting it on. Now let me show you. Are you ready? Here we go. Look, look, do you see it? The matte sealer is literally going completely flat. There's not another sealer on the market that when you're wanting to create really exquisite art, um, art level finishes that does this. I promise, they have residues of polys, the poly, the brush strokes, the sheen. You do not want a sheen when you're trying to do this, why? Think about it, why do we not want a sheen from any type of sealer that we put on here? Because the sheen is one, it's gonna interfere with the wax and the ability to be able to make this look old but the sheen is also going to interfere with um, my wax application. So now I'm gonna come back, and these are, these are um, you can use with the discount code as well today. I'm gonna load up my light antique wax. I'm gonna offload it. Now, here's something else that you're gonna notice. The, um, when you put the wax on, the pattern, the color is gonna pop out again. It's like, it just comes alive again. It's crazy. All right, so now, here's what always frustrates me about doing the lives. It's because for you to be able to go through the whole transformation process, it has to dry, and I don't want to speed up the process too much that it compromises the integrity of what it is that we're working with. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of my dark wax. As you pop on here, say hey. Tell me where you're tuning in from, and I'm curious what the weather's like in your neck of the woods. Um, and don't forget, if you share this video, tag some good friends, then your name's gonna go in for a drawing, and I'm gonna be giving a lot of this stuff away to a lucky winner that I'll announce on Monday. So all you have to do, sharing is caring. That's it. So now I'm gonna come around the edges just a little bit with my dark wax. Dark wax, this is the quickest way to ruin any fabulous project. Go, go light on the dark wax. It's just to be able, I, I focus just kind of coming around on the edges. And I'm gonna come back and just hit kind of here and there. Now, what do we need to do? We gotta fan this. 
Gene always says, get a California fan. Here we go. Piece of paper. All natural. And let's fan this. Because one of the, the, one of the ways you can ruin, and y'all have heard me say this where I sound like a broken record. One of the ways you can ruin your project really fast is the fact that um, it's still wet. And I can't come in and put down my dust of ages that's going to do the final setback on this and really make it yummy, yummy, yummy if it's wet. So you want to make sure that it's almost to a point of being dry. And a lot of that is going to start with not putting on too much wax to begin with. So now I'm going to come back with my dust of ages. And since I've got on gloves, does anybody like to um, just work with their hands? I'm just gonna dip my fingers in here and sprinkle that on here. Y'all are like, oh my gosh, she's using so much. Yeah, I, I usually do. You can offload it. Now, people ask me, Amy, can I use that? Absolutely you can. So just pull it over to the side and just dump it back in the container so that way you can use it again for your next project. So now I'm going to take a lint-free rag, and I'm going to start buffing this. Now, I really would like for you to let this dry just a few minutes because the beauty of this now, when I start buffing it, if, if I wasn't doing a live, I would probably let this set up for probably about an hour because then that way when I start coming back and I'm buffing this, I'm going to get this glorious sheen that is absolutely yummy, that's gonna be on my piece of furniture. Now, here would be my suggestion. If you have a chest of drawers, if you have a piece of furniture that that way you can use this and do this pattern on the drawers, this is the one I had finished, you can use the pattern on the drawers, then paint the rest of the piece in your Southern Gentleman. And it really is gonna make it to where it's like, oh my gosh, that gorgeous art on those drawers, and then the rest of the piece is just your base coat color. Now, I did want to go over this. Now that I've taught you this process, in order, if you like this lighter color like this, let's break down what this is. So what do we do? Our base coat is, what? Do you remember? Our base coat is Central Park. And then I did the same thing. I came back. I did my black ink first. I used the binder in the Central Park. I did the black first, and instead of doing the gold, what did I do? I just used the, well, I declare, I used the white. And then I made my glaze of Central Park, did the same thing again. So the part of the process, what I want you to, what I want you to learn is the fact that if you learn the technique, part of me doing the finish Friday, you learn the technique, and then that way you can change up the colors and truly... It's going to allow you an enormous amount of versatility. So I want to turn this around. Hold on. Bear with me. Here we go. So what do you think? Did you like it? So pretty. Oh, gorgeous. I'm so glad. That makes me so happy. When I was working on both of these both of these color variations, I'll be honest with you, this color one got me pretty jazzed. Like, I was like, yeah, I could totally see that on a piece of furniture. But what I want you to remember is the fact that creating art, don't, don't see it and say, oh, I can't do that. You need to be thinking, what can you do? Use the stencils, do striping, do tape, do, do different things that act as aids for you to be able to create really beautiful finishes. But I loved the fact that, one, you can learn, you can do base coats with your binder, and then you can come on top of it, even if you didn't do the art, and do a glaze with the top with your milk paint. Just seal it, and then do your waxes. So I hope this helped you. I love teaching you. I will tell you, I come into my studio, and, um, and I, I literally, I'm just thinking, and well, I'll just tell you, I pray about it. I pray and I'm like, Lord, what, what do you want me to teach them? Because I truly, with all my heart, 
I want you to feel like you're learning something because those of us, we're a tribe. We're a community of people that love creating. We can't explain it. And the only thing I can say is that God made us this way. And nothing makes us happier than when we can go to a place where we are in our happy place that we're able to do something. And then you know what's the added bonus? It's when somebody else looks at it and goes, that is beautiful. How did you do that? I could never do that. You're like, oh, yes, you can. That's why I, this brings me so much joy. Share this video. Tag your good friends. Your name will go in for a drawing. Monday we'll be announcing the winner. And, um, and if you use the code FINISHFRIDAY119, then that way you can get all the products that I use today and showing you these finishes 20% off. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Stay warm.